the InfoWars Nightly News. I'm your host, Jakari Jackson. Here's what we have in store for you on this October 16th, 2013 edition. Tonight, Chase limits cash withdrawals and bans international wire transfers. Is this the beginning of a financial iron curtain and a Cypress style confiscation? Then, the USDA is directing states to withhold funds for food stamps for the month of November. And Adam Kokesh will use his trial to focus attention on jury nullification. All that and more on tonight's InfoWars Nightly News. And welcome back. Top story headline, Chase Bank limits cash withdrawals, bans international wire transfers. Now this is a story we'll go into in great lengths later this broadcast with Paul Joseph Watson and we'll also show you what happened when Anthony Gucci already called Chase Bank earlier today. But this uh, article stemmed from a document we received from a Chase Bank customer outline, outline uh, just what we told you that they're saying at the Chase Bank that they're going to limit your cash withdrawals. And like I said, we'll talk more about this in depth at the end of the broadcast. But for right now, let's look at this crisis. USDA orders states to withhold electronic food stamps. Now, we've seen the riots and the storming of Walmarts and so forth go on in recent days. And that's just a brief uh, preview of things that could come if the food stamp situation gets any worse. Well, it seems like the federal government is always poking a stick at an angry bear. And this week, it's pointed at the recipients of the SNAP program. The USDA sent letters to state agency directors on October 11th directing them to delay funding to state EBT vendors until further notice. In other words, up to 47 million Americans who rely on food stamps to feed their families may face the prospect of going without food next month. Considering the fact that a two-hour glitch in the EBT system led to many riots and looting last weekend, imagine the reaction of millions of Americans living near the poverty line when they learn that they might not be credited next month due to the government shutdown. It can impact us and, uh, and it's going to cause problems because then you, you're going to come to find out you're going to have people starting to steal and do what they have to do to survive. So the government is delaying funding for the nutritional assistance program and this is alarming considering the fact that government dependency has skyrocketed during the Obama administration. Senator John Thune said since President Obama came into office, SNAP participation has increased at 10 times the rate of job creation. And that increase in dependency is no coincidence. By pushing for massive enrollment into SNAP, the Obama administration is making a sizable number of people dependent on welfare, which the government controls at a whim. But is sending the nation into panic mode part of the globalist plan? Former Navy SEAL Ben Smith seems to think so. They want us to do something. They either want to diminish our voice or our significance or draw contact and they can crush us. I mean, you've got Sheila Jackson Lee who is calling for martial law to end the shutdown. This strategy of creating pressure from above and below would mean that the government could create the crisis of a food shortage and then swoop in to restore order thereby expanding government power at the expense of individual rights. Reporting for the InfoWars Nightly News, I'm Leanne McAdoo. Now, I'm sure there are many good, decent, hardworking people on EBTs and food stamps who just maybe they lost a job or the kids got sick and they couldn't afford the bills, but there are other people who take advantage of the situation, so just go ahead and watch this clip. Rap, 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 hip hop. Rap. One for the trouble, two for the time. See, I take it to the next level. The reason why, I, you know, I came up with the welfare ID, you know, I just want to show people, you know, how, how to be real with it. I'm on welfare right now, for real. But she put that card in there, we got food stamps. And yo, I'm glad to get the food stamps. Why wouldn't you want to get free money? Why wouldn't you want free money? Well, the problem with free money is that free money isn't free, whether it's welfare or bank or bailouts or anything else. And that's a rapper, Old Dirty Bastard from Wu-Tang Clan. And God rest his soul, I'm not trying to speak ill of the dead he's passed on now. But that's just an example. The guy is riding around in a limo to pick up his welfare check, and he has his welfare card on his album. I mean, I don't think the guy was exactly hurting for cash. You know, not all rappers are super rich, but I think he could afford, you know, not to be be on food stamps and welfare. So let's switch gears right here. Co-Cash arrives in federal court for pretrial hearing on Second Amendment. 
Kokesh's case is expected to go to trial on October 24th, and he has been in federal custody since July 26th when he was denied bail. Kokesh is expected to use this trial to inform the public of their right to nullify laws they find unjust. And I spoke to Lieutenant Governor Candidate Jerry Patterson, and he said there's a time to nullify, but he said there's also a time just to ignore laws. Not speaking specifically about the Kokesh case, but he says, you know, sometimes you just have to ignore a law. Excuse me, sir, what are you doing? I'm minding my own business. I suggest you do the same. And I believe that's what Adam Kokesh was doing in a more in your face way, I will admit. If you're not familiar with Adam Kokesh, he is a broadcaster slash activist who dared go to Washington, D.C. with a loaded weapon, something at the D.C. police claim is illegal, even though that's been turned over in court cases. So anyway, they go to his house, they raid his house, they blow open his gun safe, take him into custody, deny him bail, leave his girlfriend bleeding on the floor, and that brings you up to speed with where we all are today. Uh, his next court date is on the 24th, so it's important not to forget about guys like Adam Kokesh, like Bradley Manning, like Edward Snowden, even though he's still, uh, I guess, elusive at this point. Don't forget about the tribulations these guys are going through for your freedom. Now, from a guy suffering tribulation in one front, we go to a Greenwald exits Guardian. Glenn Greenwald, who was based in Brazil, was among the first to report information provided by one-time NSA contractor Edward Snowden. He wrote in a blog post on Tuesday that he was presented with a, quote, once in a career dream journalistic opportunity, end quote, that he could not pass up. He did not reveal any specifics of the new media venture, but said details would be announced soon. So Mr. Greenwald goes on to work with the founder of eBay. So uh, I definitely appreciate some of uh, Mr. Greenwald's work in the past, especially recently with the NSA business. So I do wish him the best of luck. Now we'll end tonight with this. LAX dry ice explosions, airport employee, employee, not a elusive international terrorist, airport employee arrested in the case. A ground service employee was arrested in connection with the dry ice bomb explosions at LAX that set off an FBI investigation over the weekend. LAPD officials said 28-year-old DiCarlo Bennett of South LA was arrested in Paramount on Tuesday. Bennett reportedly worked for airport contractor Service Air. So we see here, here's a guy who's running around basically with uh, what a lot of people consider to be kind of prank bombs. Because you remember recently, I believe it was a beauty queen, had to give back her crown because she was driving around town throwing out these dry ice bombs. And I bet you, I bet you money that somebody is going to try to put some real tough regulations on dry ice because you can potentially use it in some type of explosive device, just like you can potentially use pseudofederin to make meth, all these preemptive all these pre-crime notions that if you have something, you may potentially do something bad with it someday. It's like, let's say, let's ban bath water because you may try to drown somebody in your bathtub one day. And that's exactly what we see here. But also we see a guy, uh, if the story reigns true, you know, it's still under investigation. You have an airport employee who's running around. Uh, I'm pretty sure he thought it was a prank. He thought it was a good time, even though I think it's a very stupid thing to do, setting off any type of explosion inside of an airport. Now, these are usually used in pranks, these uh, dry ice bombs, but they can be dangerous. So he could have potentially injured somebody, and now he's facing a very serious charge for having a, quote, explosive device near an airplane or near an airport. So be very cautious the next time you're in an airport, especially with the TSA trying to harass you if you make jokes or criticize them. Well, that's it for the news portion of our show, but stick around because, as I said earlier, Paul Joseph Watson will be in here giving us the full breakdown of the Chase banking fiasco. And we'll also show you the call that Anthony Gucciardi had with Chase Bank earlier today. And also a special bonus, dispelling MSNBC lies. You're going to see, oh, you, you, the veterans are throwing gates at the security personnel. And I, and I love, watch this video. When she's saying they're throwing the gates, you'll see guys just come and gently place the gates down. But we'll get to all that right after this break. But in the meantime, stop by the InfoWars shop and pick up some nascent iodine. It's a great product that we have there, and we definitely recommend you pick it up for you and your family. And also stop by PrisonPlanet.tv and get yourself a 15-day free trial. You can get the Alex Jones Show, the nightly news, the rants, the special reports, the movies. And don't forget, when Obama Deception 2 comes out in March, it'll be right there. First access to our PrisonPlanet.tv subscribers, so just another reason to get that, share that username and passcode with your friends and family today. So stick around for all those special reports and more right after this.
Alex Jones here to warn you about some of the most important health information you may ever hear. I'm talking about radiation, radioactive fallout, radioactive particles contaminating the Northern Hemisphere. Conservatively, since the 1940s, the Northern Hemisphere of our planet has more than doubled its background radiation. In fact, that was before Fukushima exploded. Now the levels are going up and up and up. Fish are contaminated in the Pacific, and the FDA, the EPA, and others, they're not worried about it. They've been raising the levels of what they claim is safe radioactive particles. So after more than two years of research into how to protect my family, looking at all the literature, talking to the experts, across the board they agreed, iodine is key, but of the family of iodine, nascent, natural, non-GMO, non-factory iodine that comes from the earth is absolutely paramount for your thyroid and other functions in the body. The literature, the research, it's there. It's not my opinion. It is admitted that iodine is essential for the health of our bodies overall, and nascent iodine is the best form. Now, we're announcing the launch of InfoWarsLife.com, and we're going to bring you scores of products over the next few years that we're researching and developing. But nascent iodine is the first product we're coming out with because it's so important, and it's also listed as a fluoride detoxer. It does so many other things. Your body needs it, and when you don't have enough iodine, forget the radiation, your thyroid absorbs the sodium fluoride and other things. Nascent iodine and InfoWars Life Survival Shield in double strength at half the cost of the leading competitors. Please visit InfoWarsLife.com today. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at InfoWars.com slash show. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at InfoWars.com slash show. I'm Anthony Gucciardi, and as you may have seen today on the Drudge Report and InfoWars.com, Chase Bank is now saying that if you have activity exceeding $50,000 or even want to do a wire transfer, well, you can't do that. And even though it's your own money, you're not able to withdraw from your account, or you might have to pay a fee for withdrawing your own money, and even then, you might not get it unless you are forced to upgrade to a, a premium or platinum business uh, class group. So they're now saying that your money is being held and you don't even have the option now to go above about $50,000 per uh, account statement. And that, of course, could be an incremental change going further. And it brings us back to uh, certain events like Cyprus, where what if something is going down? I mean, is this a, a preparation for financial meltdown in the event that everyone goes and tries to get their money out of the bank and they're unable to do so? Or is it something that's going to happen among all banks, all major banks? Will there be limits instituted for how much of your money you can actually get out of the bank in an event like that in a financial meltdown where you're unable to get your own cash? So I'm going to go ahead and call Chase Bank and speak to either a manager or a supervisor since the local branch has deferred us and see what's actually happening. Question them why can't we get our own money and if they even know what's going on, which I suspect they do not. And it, nine times out of ten, it will be a super higher up who gives these orders, and the actual workers have no clue what's going on. So let's go ahead and give them a call. Can you provide for me your first and last name, please? Hey, my name is Anthony Gucciardi, and I'm calling because I'm seeing a lot of these documents online on Drudge Report and Infowars.com and stuff. And it, it's these account holders, business account holders, and they're saying, yeah, I have an act. Actually, it's an official document from the senior vice president of Chase Business Banking. It says, your cash activity limit for these accounts will be $50,000 per statement cycle per account. So they can't deposit more than 50 or take out more than 50 total. All these you know, deposits and everything. And it says, after November 17th, you also won't be able to send international wire transfers for your own safety. And I'm wondering, as an account holder, what's going on here? Why can't I have my own money? Okay, well, I just understand your concern. Um, I'd be more than happy to go ahead and explain it with you. Um, yes, these are, uh, we did go ahead and send on the letter to all business customers regarding to the changes that we're going to be having on the business accounts um, starting on November 17th. Yes, with the business classic and the business select checking accounts uh, specifically, we are going to be having changes to where um, outgoing international transacts international wire transfers um, that they can no longer be sent out from the accounts, but you can still receive them. Well, what about um, this $50,000 per statement cap? 
I mean, why can't people access their own money if they're going through? Well, here? this is just going to be a new change that we're having to where the cash, only cash deposits or withdrawals per month, if you do more than 50000 more than three times in a 12-month period, then that's where we can upgrade your account to a performance business checking, which is a upgrade new the account that we have. So why are you doing this, though? Why, why is it for the uh, risks and safety of everyone and you? What is so risky about allowing people to use their own money? Well, it's not nothing that has to do with anything being risky. It's just some changes that we're having with the business accounts that we're just informing everybody of um, that has a business account through Chase. Um, but as far as to why specifically, I'm not, we're not really giving that information. It's just changes that Chase decided to go ahead and do with the business account. So you're not revealing but, why you're actually making the change. You're just doing it and just telling us that we can't have our own money. Well, no, we're not saying that you can't. We're just advising you. If, if you believe that you're going to be depositing or withdrawing more than $50,000 cash. Well, what happens if I get uh, a check? A what happens if I get a check for $500,000? Do you just, you own 450000 of it until I can wait that, the monthly amounts? That would be a cash. That would be a check, not cash. If you deposit a check, that's different. We're talking about just cash. Oh, so you're, this is only about going against cash payments. Right. It's just cash deposits or cash withdrawals. So not, you don't like yeah, cash? Deposit, you don't like cash right. because why? You think it's more risky than uh, debt-based currencies or what? Um, I'm, unfortunately, I mean, we don't, we're not really given that information. We don't know why we're just... Well, I mean, I just, feel like as, I just feel like as an account holder that I should know why I can't have my own money. And I, I, it, my understanding seems to be that cash is kind of the antidote, antidote to the banking system. And you guys kind of don't like cash because with all digital numbers, there's no real money going on. So you could kind of close the accounts and do whatever you want with cash. It's like it's actual real money. So what do you think? I mean, is that why? Is it because it's all digital numbers and you can do whatever you want with it? No, so we're, we're not informed of that information. We don't know. But we're so you don't even know yourself. You don't actually know what's going on either. No, so we're, we're not, none of us are on telephone banking. We're not given the reason why all these changes are happening. Um, so, just so even your supervisor has no idea why. So you, none of n no one knows what's going on. Basically, you're just told to enforce it, and that you really have no clue why this is even happening. No, we're not informed why. We're just no. These are just changes. Chase decided to go ahead and do. We're not sure why. Well, I, I would really like to talk to your supervisor about this because I do have a business account and I do a lot of serious uh, checking and everything like that, and I want to know what's going on. Could you please provide me your supervisor, please? Yeah, of course. Let me reach out. I want the senior service specialist. You may hear a brief moment of silence when I'm dialing. Uh, once we're all connected, I'll just introduce you and let them know what you're calling in for today. Great. Thank you very much. We have one of our business customers on the line with us. Um, he actually requested to speak to a senior service specialist regarding to the uh, letter that we sent out regarding to the changes of the business accounts. Is that something you can further assist them with? Yes. Thank you. And, sir, unless there are any further questions for me, would it be okay if Walter took over from here? Absolutely. Thank you. Thank you for calling, Chief. Thank you. Uh, hello, um, Mr. Was, was she not able to explain the letter, or, or was there something that concerned you about the letter that, that you wanted to speak to me in regards? Uh, you know, I just had a few questions. Um, my question was, you know, what's going on here? Why are the cash purchase, uh, the deposits and everything being limited specifically? And the thing that concerned me is I said, why is this going on? And she said, we actually have no idea. We've, we have not been told by anyone higher ups what's going on. So is that true? You guys don't even know what's going on? We know what's going on. Uh, now, the, if you want to know the reason why, I can find, I, I can try to find out for you if you give me one or two minutes. You don't know, though? You don't out. know why? I know what the changes are. But no, I, 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 mean, I know what the changes are. I mean, I think I understand that, you know, basically, if I had $500,000 in cash for some reason and I deposited it, then I can only get $50,000 a month of my own money. And I'm, no, I'm just wondering why cash, why are these limits being put in place? You say to manage the risks and the safety and everything and no more wire transfers at all. I'm just wondering what's going on. And she told me that even you guys aren't told. And it's fine. I, 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 that's fine. If you don't know, I want you just to tell me that, yes, we don't even know what's going on. Well, like I said, we, we haven't been told, but I can find out. Also, um, there are, I mean, it, it, it's just, um, we, do, uh, we are offering new accounts that, do, that have other limitations that don't have those limits put in place. And maybe that is why they're putting the limits on these accounts. But I can go ahead and, and, uh, and find out for you. Well, what, what she seemed to tell me was if I had more money and put more in and offered you guys more things or something like that, then I could upgrade my account to a preferred premium account where I could access my own money. But 
what you're saying is that, and it's fine, I just, I just want to know that you don't even know what's going on, but you could probably maybe ask and potentially find out for me? Yes, I can find out um, by asking one of my managers here. That, that's a very good question. We haven't actually been told why. We just know that these are some new limits being put on the account yeah. because we're offering new accounts that take the place of these, of these two accounts. Has two anyone accounts. else called you and asked this? No, this would be the first question, the first one asked. Well, that, that would be excellent if you could ask your manager what's going on, see if he might know. That would be about one or two minutes. Okay, okay thank you very much. much. Thank you very much for holding. Hey, thanks uh, a lot. Great. So, so uh, basically, um, what, what we've done is we've been we're uh, we're paying special. Uh, what they're saying is that we're spending paying special attention to international wires and large cash transactions because of the risks involved. And due to those risks, uh, a decision the decision was made to limit those activities on the select and the classic business accounts. Um, and let's see here since. But we, since we do a lot of those activities on the business performance and the platinum accounts, uh, those are designed for uh, business customers who work closely with relationship managers like at the branches, and they typically view international wires and large cash transactions. So those are being, I guess, those since those work more closely with the relationship managers and the branches, um, that's going to help us reduce the risks of, of those. So, so what risks are you talking about? What risks? Loss to the bank. Loss to the bank. And the so, I mean, does this remind you of a Cyprus incident where if anything bad goes on, we can't even access our own money? I mean, I know 50000 might sound like a lot to some people, but that's all transactions. I mean, you could get a check for $5 million and only make, you know, $10,000 from it, hypothetically. So, you know, I understand it's just cash transactions, but why is cash activity so much more, you know, sacred? Why is it such more of a risk than uh, digital? Yeah, um, cash transactions... And, and uh, large international wires, I, I, they have a higher risk because of the amount of money we're dealing with. I mean, if if, if, um, if we handle a large cash transaction that um, you know, we that, that is, I mean, if we handle a smaller amount of, of cash, and yeah, I guess the big it can take the loss. Uh, no, I get it. I get it. You're just explaining the sheet, yeah. but the, your manager didn't really even understand why, did he? He didn't even understand what was going on. I mean, he gets the whole risk thing, but he doesn't know why this is happening, right? Well, this is uh, basically what they, yeah, what they Yeah, told but, so basically, I, I, no, no, it's fine. I understand. No, I understand. So basically, what's going on is somebody at the top instituted this, and you guys really aren't sure what's going on. You're just, you, can, you just go by with a paper, right? That's fine. That's right. what, that's what's exactly. going on. Exactly. So, yeah. No, that's and, fine. So you guys don't. No, no. I no. I just want to be sure because you know I want to get. I want to get to the bottom of it. If you guys don't know, that's fine. But you guys don't really know what's going on. Well, this is what we were told, and also we were also told that if you need more detail, um, that um, that we were we're going to ask to uh, for you to visit the nearest branch or talk to your banker and to discuss. Uh, but they probably account. wouldn't really know either, huh? That well, see, that, that's what we were told. So they should be able to give you more information. They, that's yeah. Well, I was told that you might know, and then you told yeah. the manager might know, but it, it, it's fine. It just seems that yeah. nobody actually knows why it's happening. Just yeah. what, so, so you did go yeah. into a branch and talk to a banker, and they, they they directed you to us. Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah, I'll bring that up to my management here because this is um, this is actually a you know company. Uh, a I mean, yeah. I mean, you know, the documents and everything are on Drudge Report, Infowars.com, and stuff seen by millions of people. So I think you might get some calls. I mean. It just seems weird that nobody in Chase actually knows why it's happening. And then, you know, to think about the fact that if you had a lot of money in your account, you wouldn't be able to access it and take it out. I mean, here's my question. What happens if I had a deposit of $100,000? You would oh, legally be able to cash. keep 50000 of my money? Cash deposit? No, no, absolutely not. No, it's cash, it, it, though. We're talking about cash activity. Yeah, you can still deposit more than that. There's just a, a fee that would that would happen, and if it happens too much regularly, then we would uh, Chase would be forced to convert it to one of the other uh, business accounts, and you would still be able to use the money. There would just be like a fee, like per thousand. Sometimes I know in some accounts, some existing accounts, there's like a forty cent fee per one thousand dollars that goes over the limit. Because we already have a lot of accounts that have cash deposit limits. Um, uh, you know, it's set in place for those small businesses that don't do as many transactions as, as you know. The yeah, yeah. Businesses. So it's fine. So if I just if I yeah. deposited my money, I needed some of my money. I would just have to pay you guys a fee 
to get it back. And, and if it happens too much, then Chase would, you know, they would transfer. They would, they would block the account. ability and, and upgrade and make me pay more money. Yeah, that's fine. So so let me ask you a question. What's to cha- uh, stop people from going to another bank? I mean, Wells Fargo doesn't do this. Do you think they will in the future or what? You know, but, um, that's a good question. Um, these, us- these changes usually come from, you know, um, compliance or, or regulations and, so maybe it is uh, going to happen, you know. Across so you the board. think it might be a government thing coming from the top? I, I, I really, honestly think it's just due to the risk. We want people, you know, customers doing larger transactions, cash transactions, and international wires to work more closely with relationship managers. All right. Well, I appreciate your time. Um, I'm glad you guys are telling me the truth. You know, just no one really knows what's actually happening, but that's fine. Um, I'm sure it'll come up again in the future. And I understand the letter and everything like that. It just kind of concerns me. And I think we might actually see other banks start to do this. And it might, it might come from the top. It might be a government thing. I'll, I'm interested to find out. So thanks a lot for your time. My pleasure. Thank you for calling Chase. Have a good day. Bye-bye. Bye. Well, it turns out, as expected, the Chase employees had no idea what actually was going on. And they kept telling me that, yeah, you know, you could probably get your money out if you pay a fee or upgrade your account and pay more money to us. But yeah, cash is bad. We only want numbers and digits on a screen that we can control. And that he said it could maybe even potentially have been a government thing because he had no clue. First person I spoke with had absolutely no idea and had just started hearing about it. said, yeah, we know about it. We don't know why it's happening. We don't know who at the top ordered this. But ultimately, yeah, they said no one has any idea why it's happening. It is true. And they sent the letters out, confirmed to all the business account owners of this class. But they said, in order to get your own money now, you have to join like an elite premium grade platinum business account to even do anything now. And I asked them, you know, how do you how do you think this relates to Cyprus in the event that we want to take our money out? What could we do? And he said, well, you'd have to pay a fee for your money if you could get it out and then upgrade your account over and over again, et cetera, et cetera. And he doesn't really know what would happen. So there you have it, as, as predicted, Chase actually has no idea what's going on, besides the higher-ups who we could not speak to, and the employees are concerned themselves, and they don't even know what to say. They just kept reading the letter to me over and over again, explaining it to me, and I already understood it. So as it turns out, if you're banking with Chase, it appears at the time the other banks may implement this as well, but you need to get your money out of there, because in the event of a financial meltdown, Cypress style, it looks like you'd have some, it, you might not even be able to get your money out. I'm Anthony Gucciardi, and we'll continue reporting on this as more breaks out. Stay tuned after the news for more special reports. Now you can watch The Alex Jones Show live as it happens at Infowars.com slash show. You'll find links to all of our content there and a free 15-day trial for Prison Planet TV. More than 60 movies and documentaries all in one place at Infowars.com slash show. Last night on MSNBC, Rachel Maddow covered the Veterans March that took place over the weekend. And in stereotypical mainstream fashion, she deliberately distorted and falsified the facts surrounding the protest. First, she made it look like the Veterans March was organized by the Tea Party, led by Ted Cruz and Sarah Palin. And she said it was a small demonstration and once again pulled out the race card, insinuating that the veterans rally was somehow racially motivated. Vaguely threatening but incoherent is a patented thing with these folks. It has never, ever held them back. Like, say, this guy who brought the Confederate flag to the rally to wave it in front of the White House. Yes, an African-American family lives in that house now. But hey, I think the idea here was more about waving a Confederate flag in front of a house where a black family lives than it was about anything specific related to the Marines. And of course, they kept showing footage of this one guy who was out there with his Confederate flag, but failed to show the incredible amount of veterans who showed up, including, yes, black veterans. And that's because most everyone is extremely outraged right now about the Obama administration putting up barricades and denying veterans access to our nation's memorials. Y'all need to perform the Constitution you took the oath to do. These veterans served our country. They put their life in line on the line for you, for our country. You're going to block their access to the memorial? 
surely you got more dignity and respect than that. You're going to spit on their graves as well when they die. But Rachel Maddow's line to her audience got worse. She claimed that the veterans, for example, were throwing the barricades at the White House, which did not happen. They then picked up the barricades that were around the closed World War II memorial and dragged the barricades over to the White House and hurled the barricades at the White House. But the big lie was when she told her audience that the police were not getting paid. Then the protesters went home. So the police, who through no fault of their own are working without being paid, the police had to pick up those barriers, drag them back to where they came from, and keep working their shifts without being paid because of the shutdown that these folks made happen. Wait a minute. Let's stop right there. Notice they keep showing a video loop of a veteran who is pushing one of the riot police backwards. What MSNBC failed to show their audience was the fact that it was the riot police who lashed out at veterans first. You can clearly see this cop pushing the veteran before the veteran pushes back. MSNBC deliberately edited that part out of the video. And as far as the cops not being paid during the shutdown, it's on record that all patrol and riot police are seen as essential. They're all on duty and they're all getting paid. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. A little backup. So the police that are getting yelled at there are working without pay while the shutdown goes on. And working without pay includes now getting screamed at for being at work. Is there any threat? Is there any law being broken? And there were a lot of World War II veterans that showed up for the march over the weekend, and no World War II veteran should be denied access to the Iwo Jima Memorial or the World War II Memorial or to any other memorial for that matter. And the fact that they were denied access should be a wake-up call to us all. The enemy is no longer foreign, it is domestic. So remember, you can't trust MSNBC, you can't trust Rachel Maddow, and don't fall for the race card. Those memorials belong to us, each and every one of us. And as long as they're out there putting up barricades, it's up to all of us to get out there, support our veterans, tear those barricades down, and send a clear message to Obama that we're not about to back down. I'm Darren McBreen for Infowars.com. And welcome back. So you just heard that breaking news from Anthony Gucciardi. Paul Joseph Watson has been following this situation very carefully, the Chase Bank situation. He's going to talk to us more about it right now. So, Paul, what do you think about that breaking news from Anthony Gucciardi? Well, it's amazing. I think the key points that came up there is that they've, first of all, they've confirmed that Chase Bank business customers are receiving these letters informing them that from November 17th, all international wire transfers are going to be withdrawn, completely banned, and uh, cash activity on business account will be limited to $50,000. So you think about just a basic grocery store is going to turn over $50,000 over the course of a month, mm -hmm. which is when this limit applies to. So the claim, as some have made, that this is a money laundering regulation just doesn't cut it because many small businesses are going to be affected by this. They're not going to be able to uh, withdraw deposit cash in any kind of significant amount. And if you're a small business that's paying for foreign contract labor or stock or materials from abroad, how are you going to pay for it if you can't use international wire transfers? In, in the very least, it's going to be a complete headache for businesses. As uh, Anthony said there, he found out that it basically the order had come from the top. Uh, the employees at Chase Bank confirmed it, but they didn't really know anything about it. And then another key factor, of course, was they're talking about having to pay a dollar for every one you take out, having to pay a fee for every dollar you take out. So it sounds like they've got no idea what this policy is, yet they've confirmed it's been implemented. It's come from the top. And in an age of bail-ins and account gouging, you know, Cyprus style, you can understand why a lot of people are concerned about this. And Paul, you think about that because we warned about the Cyprus situation when it first happened and we all always get the normal things. So that can never happen here. That's just them over there. We'll never have to worry about this. And I, I admit, you know, I had to go to the bank today. I don't bank with Chase, but just in case I went and drew a little bit extra, withdrew a little bit extra out of my account, just in case these things start to affect other, other banks besides Chase. 
Well, I've, a lot of the comments I've read so far are people saying that their bank has also introduced similar regulation. So it, it looks like it's across the board. And the bottom line is this is about them controlling your money. These Federal Reserve linked banks think your money is their money. Mm -hmm. And it's obviously designed as part of this wider move to shut down businesses who mainly deal in cash. It's part of this move towards a cashless society. And as I said before, it's not just international wire transfers. In the case of the Peak Charter School, which is a, an elementary school in Colorado, they were told that domestic wire transfers from their business savings account were completely banned. So if they want to send that money to another account domestically inside the US, they just can't do it. They don't have access to that money to do it. And that's why a lot of people are concerned about this, because, you know, it comes amidst this debt default, this uh, shutdown of the government, people talking about the potential future collapse of the US dollar. So it seems part of this move on behalf of banks to make it increasingly difficult for people to move money out of the country. Mm -hmm. Now, Paul, briefly with the time we have left, can you touch on the EBT situation? Yeah, that was a USDA letter that was sent out to the people who handle this uh, electronic benefits transfer system. And they basically said before the debt deal was agreed today that they couldn't fund the EBT card, which is, of course, the electronic food stamp card for states. Uh, as of next month. So they were going to be in the hole and people were talking about going hungry. There was a Fox 13 news report where people in, I believe it was Utah, were saying this is going to cause chaos. People are going to go hungry. We saw what happened last week with the temporary glitch, the shutdown of EBT card payments, looting in several Walmart stores stores and a, a mini riot in another store in Mississippi. So after a few hours, they were already looting and staging mini riots. You know, what could happen if you had days and days of delays mm -hmm. in these food stamps, these electronic benefit transfer cards? It's a serious problem. They've resolved the debt situation for now, but a lot of people are still concerned about the delay in receiving those food stamps for welfare recipients because of the chaos that was already caused in just a, a few hours on Saturday when the EBT card system failed. And Paul, isn't Chase Bank behind the EBT card system? Yes, they're actually contracted to provide EBT card services. So every, every time somebody signs up for an EBT card, JP Morgan Chase gets a cut of it. So that's another aspect of this that needs to be investigated in light of the potential that those electronic food stamps would be cut off from next month. Also, we have to remember that back in March, it came out that many Chase customers saw their account balances temporarily reduced to zero mm -hmm. when they tried to take money out of ATMs. That glitch lasted for hours, and again, it reduced confidence in Chase Bank. So this is only going to do the same, and we'll continue to investigate the story. All right, Paul Joseph Watson of PrisonPlanet.tv, InfoWars.com. Expect you'll have some new articles coming out pretty soon, Paul. Yeah, we'll continue to look into it. It's top of Drudge Report right now, so it's a hot story. A lot of people are interested in it. All right, thanks, Paul. Thank you. All right, so thanks for tuning in to this extended edition of the InfoWars Nightly News. It's a very special report. I'm sure we'll hear more from uh, Paul Joseph Watson and also Anthony Gucciardi on the subject. But in the meantime, you can go to prisonplanet.tv and get yourself a 15-day free trial. You get the Alex Jones Show, the Nightly News, the special reports, and more. I'm Jakari Jackson for the InfoWars Nightly News, and we'll see you tomorrow night.